Starting around phase C, we begin to integrate full body weight plyometrics. We usually start with the jump rope. It's an easy way to transition people into the, the full body weight joint stresses. This is a good exercise, good conditioning exercise. It's great to assess their alignment, your joint alignment, watching for those um, abnormal joint alignments we talked about earlier. And you want to really watch their form. We usually have our athletes go for a minute at a time. We also have our athletes jump rope with alternating feet. This really loads the front leg a little more. We usually have our athletes go for a minute at a time. Once again, watching her alignment, watching her impact, trying to get them laying nice, soft. In each of the impact phases, we repeat some of the entry-level agility exercises. Repeat the quick feet step work. A good rule of thumb, we usually double or triple uh, the time of the exercise for her rest break. So she's going to rest a minute to a minute and a half in between exercises. Repeat the Ali Shuffle Agility Exercise. Getting as many touches as possible in the time frame. Repeat the lateral quick feet agility exercise. Instead of repetitions, we almost always use time for exercise dosing here. And finally, repeat the lateral skaters agility exercise. That flexion angle on the top step is real important. If you see, she's getting below that 30, that 60 degree mark, which is super important for hamstring and quad co-contraction. This exercise is lateral bounding with rotation. The mechanics are very much similar to the lateral bounding with rotation in place, with the three points added to it to challenge the balance and proprioception of the athlete. As they become more and more comfortable, we're going to encourage them to decrease the amortization phase and work on exploding each jump going for more distance and more power off each jump. And that is three-point lateral bounding with rotation. After we've started the, the patient um, on a jogging program on the treadmill that they're tolerating well, we transition them into the sport cord. Um, with the sport cord, we're going to use this for the next uh, four weeks. Um, we're going to start by having the patient jog forward. Usually we start at about a half, half speed here, and in return, we're going to do this for the duration of phase C. When we get into the advanced phase and phase D, we're going to move it up to a three-quarters pace. So go ahead and ramp it on up. So it's near full sprint here. The added resistance just makes the muscles work over time. This is really forcing the glutes and hamstrings to drive. Okay. And after that, we're going to spin her around and we're going to do the same thing backwards. So once again, in phase C, we're going to do this at about a half speed here. And we group all these sport cord exercises together. Patients are usually on this for a while. And as we get into phase D, we're going to have her go at three quarters pace here. So really driving through those legs. Good, and that's sport cord forward and backwards. In phase C, we begin to do the lateral bounding exercise with the sport cord. So we're gonna do three point lateral bounding with the sport cord for resistance. This really focuses on power. So he's gonna drive to that first cone, soft landing, same landings we've been talking about all the way through the program. Driving off that left leg, that left leg is getting overworked. This really challenges the balance and core stability throughout the exercise. Okay, and after she's done the desired sets and reps, we're gonna repeat this driving off the other leg. In the second week of phase C, a dynamic warm-up is added. 
and allows for increased elasticity of muscles and tendons during sport-specific movements prior to focused training. We're going to do this for about 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, we're going to have them do arm circles forward, walking down. We need about a 12 to 15 yard area to do this warm up. And back. Normally we would have her do two laps here. We're going to do arm twists, trunk twists. So she's walking at a brisk pace. We want to keep moving throughout the exercise and warm up here. This is also a good way to kind of assess her readiness to move. She's going to do hip circumduction, keeping moving. She's going to open and rotate the hips, stretch the groin. So as I said before, normally we're going to do two laps of each here. We're going to have them go into a skipping bound motion. So I want to get in that front leg nice and high. As I said, this is a good way to assess someone's ability to both push off the effect of the leg and see if they're favoring one leg or another. Okay, now we're going to move into high knees. So she's going to try to get as many touches as possible. And we're going to move into gluteal kicks. Keep moving the whole way through this. A lot of these movements are actually what we use on our return to sport test too. So it's a good thing that we have athletes practice this for when we get to that point. Okay, now we're gonna do move into side shuttle. She's gonna face one direction, stay in that flex knee position. And she's gonna do two laps like that. Now we're gonna move into karaoke's. Important with this, what I want her doing is turning from the hips, not from the knees. We don't wanna be twisting the knee. She's gonna come back facing the same direction. Okay, now we're gonna have her sprint forward. And she's gonna back pedal. Okay, lastly, we're gonna have her stand in place and she's gonna bounce up and down off her toes. And that's the dynamic warm up. We're gonna do this for the remainder of the protocol. Starting in phase C, we move away from the step agility exercises and move into the agility ladder. Um, this, also, this is more sport specific and puts a lot more demand on the knees. Um, so we're gonna run Katie through a series of exercises. The first one we're gonna do is what we call quick feet forward. So she's gonna go as high as high knees. So she's double touching in each rung here. Okay, and we usually do this three times. The next one we'll do is lateral high knees, which she's gonna move in the coronal plane with her legs pumping nice and high. Her hips are controlling where her knees are in space. We go back facing the same direction, working the legs a little differently. Then we go into lateral quick feet which are ins and outs, and we're gonna do this two different ways. We're gonna do the first one with her leading with her front foot. This challenges dexterity, so she's gonna go in and out, and then go for speed. And she's gonna go back facing the same direction here. So this is lateral, quick feet, in and out, with front lead. Now we're gonna reverse this, and she's gonna do back foot leading. But you can see there's more rotation in the hips with this. A little more challenging movement. This is lateral quick feet in and out with the back lead. From there we'll move into the ollie shuffle. She's gonna, very similar to what we were doing on the step, she's gonna jump up and switch her feet moving in and out each rung. So a lot of rotation at the hips and she's gonna reverse that. When we first start these usually we do three times down and back of each exercise. The last one we're gonna run through we call the icky shuffle and this is a first real hard cutting exercise. So she's going to start cutting on that outside leg and she's going to go back doing the same thing here. So these are the ladder agility drills that we do up until the jump program begins.